Welcome to part three of the mechanical room series here. If you haven't seen the first two parts, um, hit the description below and I've got a link in there for the playlist and you will see parts one and two. So I'm going to continue discussion here where I left off and I am about to talk about the condensation and the condensate lines coming out of these units. So um, because these things are condensing and when you're bringing in cold water, I mean, you're bringing cold glycol back to the flat plate and then, you know, it's, it's sucking heat out of the primary loop side. So then you're getting cooler water coming back into these things. These things, at first, these things will see like 70 degree water coming back, 140 going out, 70 degrees coming back. So that flat plate is sucking you know that 70 degrees off the primary loop and heating that glycol coming back at 20 you know up to whatever you know um you got to calculate in losses and all of that but uh yeah so these units will initially see colder fluid colder water coming back to them so they'll condense and they love the colder return, the more condensed, the more efficient they are. So the condensation that comes out of these things through these PVC pipes is very acidic. And if you have cast iron drains, um, it will eat through cast iron drains in, in no time. And if you, you, if you Google this, YouTube this, there's videos out there on this. So you need to neutralize it. Now, Takagi sells neutralizer kits i think navian a lot of the major manufacturers sell kits that you can buy that have like a neutralizer in them a lot of times it's limestone or marble and you can change these cartridges once every year or two years or whatever well i built one that basically does the same thing it comes down and i got this design from a from a friend i met on one of the car wash forums that did this exact same thing and, and he taught me how to do it and basically all my condensate comes in here okay it goes through this union it goes into this adapter which is one inch to three inch um, but this fitting right here between these two is not glued so what I do is I break this union open and this will loosen the pipe from this thick bottom fixture same thing here I can loosen this union and I can take this whole thing outside then I pop this off, and this is this is glued down here, so this is all watertight. But then what I do is is basically uh, I can clean it out if I need to. So there is a, a glued-in piece of one inch that comes out of the bottom of this union, and it goes down into about the bottom of this ninety. But it's not glued. I can pull the whole thing out. Okay, these are just marble chips that I got at Home Depot. And I used a piece of clear PVC off of, you know, eBay so that you can see what's going on. But basically, as the acidic condensate comes in, and you can try and bend this down so you can see it, this is full of condensate right here. Okay? As it runs across this marble, it neutralizes. It eventually comes out here, goes out, and it flows into the sump pit okay now I do have all plastic PVC drains and everything here but because that sump pump itself is metal you know it's got metal components in it I didn't want to prematurely wear it down so you know that's why the neutralizer I mean if you have all PVC I mean I guess you really wouldn't have to neutralize it but it's probably better if you do um, you know then sending this acidic water out but uh yeah so i took a couple of pieces of aluminum and cut a couple of slots in ran a couple of band clamps through and they just they just hold it flat so it doesn't twist and that's my neutralizer the pressure relief valves for the domestic side i, I wanted to do them in copper but i just ran out of time so they're just pvc for now and they just come down if it ever did blow it'll just blow into the sump pit um you know it is what it is maybe someday i'll i'll redo that with copper but uh but yeah so i think this one's getting a little long um 
you know, I'm, I'm probably over an hour now talking about this. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but, uh, I'll do the, I'll do another video for how I wired it all. If, if you guys are interested in this, um, I have all of these aquastats connected to these smart outlets, which can do a couple of things. They can sense the wattage going flowing through them. So I can do things in smart things where if this outlet here sees a wattage of more than two watts, I know that that primary loop pump must be running. So I can have it send me a text message and export out to a Google Sheets document. And what that lets me do is it lets me track how often are they running. So when the snow melts on, every time the snow melt aquastat needs heat, it turns on that pump, that switch sees the load increase, it sends me a text message and it also exports out. And then I can collect all that data and I can say, okay, that's how at the end of my time-lapse videos, if you guys have watched my other videos, that's how at the end I can say the system ran for, you know, the system was on for 13 hours. And I don't know if I've actually been putting the runtime on there, but in my spreadsheets, and I can show you guys the spreadsheets too if you want me to, just, just comment so I know what you guys want. But I know that like on a normal day when the snow melt is running for 13 hours, it really only was firing the heaters for like, you know, six and a half hours of that 13 hours. And the reason I know that is because of the smart things outlets and all the data logging. So they also let me do things like turn off the pumps. So with that off right now, and I can turn this off from my phone if I need to, with that off, there's no power going to that pump. So it doesn't matter if, if any of these aquastats are calling doesn't matter it's that pump's not going to come on because the power that's feeding the relays that do that is off okay i also put some bypass switches in that let me override the aquastat so for example in the lake effect snow um time lapse that i did on like i don't remember the date now it was a, it was a week a couple weeks ago we got a we had a pretty good lake effect snow event maybe it was the eighth or something like that um maybe the 8th of february i don't remember but uh anyway it, the system was overwhelmed by lake effect it couldn't keep up so what i did was i came down here and when when it can't keep up and there's snow on the driveway it really doesn't make sense for it to be kicking on and off i want as much heat going out there as i possibly can to melt the snow so in other words i want to help it i want to give it a, a, a kick so what i did was because i was home and i was able to do this I just came down and flipped that switch and it then overrides the aquastat. So as long as that switch is on, this thing is, is getting power all the time. The, the valve is open, the pump's on, and it's just going to run and run and run and run. It doesn't matter if the aquastat's coming back at 90 or 100 degrees. It doesn't matter. It's in override. It's going to run. And during that lake effect event, that's exactly what I did for an hour, hour and a half. I put it in override. And I let it dump as many BTUs as it could get out there to help it keep up. Um, it's not the most efficient to do it that way. You're burning about a dollar an hour when it's running nonstop instead of 50 cents an hour. So, you know, you're running the heaters, so it costs you more. But what sense does it make to run it at all if there's snow on the driveway? So, you know, I wanted to give it a, a swift kick to help it, so I overrode it. You could do the same thing with the radiant zones. Um, and then same thing for the tank pump. If I wanted to, I could turn off the tank aquastat. So right now it doesn't matter how cold that tank gets, it's not gonna turn on that pump because I've got the power off to it. Okay, this one I pretty much leave on all the time. Um, this one down here, however, is my recirc pump, like I mentioned. That just keeps hot water pretty much to this point, to the bottom of this manifold. Well, at two in the morning, I don't need, I'm not worried about getting instant hot water at the kitchen or the bathroom faucet at two in the morning, you know, or during the day when we're at work. So what I do is in smart things, I have schedules set up that, you know, at certain times when we leave for work on certain days, it shuts off the research pump because there's no need for it to be researching. I don't need hot water. And at night, you know, 10 o'clock every night, it shuts off 
that aquastat shuts off that power to that pump so it won't recirc all night and that's how overnight this tank will hold its heat for like seven hours because it'll it'll that'll run sometimes it kicks the tank off you know at like you know during the day is a good one for example like it usually fires the tank like 7 30 7 45 in the morning and then you know we go to work on certain days and then depending on the day whether my wife and the kids are home at two or four i have it come back on but usually this this tank won't lose enough heat to turn these on in that seven hour period all day and it just shows you how efficient the tank is so um usually what will happen is at two o'clock or four o'clock or whatever depending on the day the power will come back onto that aquastat it will see that the line is cool because it hasn't run all day it will recirc the line which then drops the temperature in the tank because it's usually pretty close because it's been slowly losing heat all day it hasn't gotten low enough to fire but it's close and then it fires and it's again it logs it sends me every time this tank pump comes on this switch senses the wattage and it sends me a text and it logs it every time that research pump comes on it sends me a text and it logs it i put the text messages on do not disturb so they're not driving me nuts but i can go in there and say oh okay the tank the heaters were on for three minutes to recirculate the tank and that happens six times a day um, when the snow melts on, that's how I can say it ran for 11 minutes. It was off for 13. It ran for another 11. It was off for th it's it's all data logging through smart things, you know. So, yeah, I think I'm going to stop this one here, um, guys. I can make more. I can get into how we balance, um, you know, how we balance the manifolds and how we do different things you know how how i purged it i have videos on purging it. i can get into all of that stuff if you guys are interested i'll walk you through i have videos from pretty much right after i mounted these things on the walls and started plumbing so i can bring you guys with me through the whole journey you know trials and tribulations uh you know good and bad of some of the problems i ran into some of the leaks i had some of the stuff i had to fix i have all of that and i'd be happy to upload it if there's really a audience if there's a demand for it you know if if nobody cares and nobody comments and nobody subscribes and i get six people that watch the video and then it's not worth the time to edit the videos and to upload them you know what i mean so let me know let me know if you're interested in that but anyway I f i've had enough people ask me about the mechanical room for the system so this is the mechanical room um it works great i could not be happier with this setup as of right now so yeah that's pretty much it for this one guys thanks for watching and uh, i think it's supposed to snow tomorrow which i was planning on making this video right now over this weekend uh valentine's day weekend 2021 but we're expecting snow so i'm gonna want the gopro out time lapsing for you guys so i figured i'd come down here on friday night and uh make it for you tonight because uh this weekend hopefully i'm making another time lapse of it snowing so anyway thanks for watching if if you like this stuff guys uh like and subscribe let me know and uh we'll see you guys on the next one thanks